This is uh, 2020. Question one was about superposition. We will have superposition in this test also. So there was this circuit and I asked, what is the current I using superposition? So obviously what we do, we take one source at a time, right? This is for finding one, one current, this is for the final second current, and we solve each one separately. We get the current for each for this one, we get the fine for this one, and then what we do, we add them up, right? So you solve the circuit based on only one source, and here you, in this case, you shorten it because it's a voltage source, and then you do the same thing for the second one, you have that one with the short for that. And then you add the results. Question number two was to, for this one, to find V open circuit. Okay? We will have these kind of questions also. Okay? To find V open circuit, I short circuit, R7, we will have it. So those who did not do well last time, it's a wonderful opportunity to use what you know already. Okay? Review a bit and make it happen. So 2A, V open circuit. What is V open circuit here? The voltage from Vx to here is six, right? So what is the voltage, what is the voltage Vx? There is current flowing here, right? When I open this circuit, there is no load. So the only current flowing is here. So the voltage is four milliamps times one plus two. Four milliamps times three kilo ohm, which gives you uh, 12, 12 volts, okay? So this Vx is 12 volts. Now, these 12 volts, you need to add six to get V of open circuit, right? So this gives you six volts plus 12 from here, which is 18 volts. Here was another question. What is R7 in for this? Switch. We show this one, correct? We open this one and you show this one, correct? So all we see is 15 kilo ohm, and then we have here 10 kilo ohm and 20 kilo ohm. This is what we see. To find our thevenin, this is the resistance, this is short, this is open, this is short. So we have 15 in parallel with 10 and 10 plus 20, correct? 10 and 20 are in series, and both of them as one unit are in parallel with the 15. So this gives you 20 kilo ohm. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that it's open parallel? Open, we don't care. No current, nothing. So? It does nothing, there is nothing there, okay? It's just open, no current. It's not part of the circuit. 10 and 20 are in series, right? Yeah. And now, the 15 kilo ohm is sharing the same nodes between this and this. So 15 in parallel with 10 and 20 in series, correct? This is from chapter six. For this capacitor of 100 microfarad, the voltage is given. This is the voltage. We try to find the current. What do we need to do? CDVDT, okay? This whole chapter is CDVDT, believe it or not. So you take this graph, you take the slope of the voltage, multiply by C, and get the current. 
Yeah? So, as expected, we are looking for the slope. The slope is, four, um, is point is 4, and this slope is negative 8. This is slope is 4. This is 0, 0. So, we have here C dv dt is 0.4, C dv dt here is 0, C dv dt is negative something, C dv dt here is positive, and then 0 again. Okay? Clear? Second question. For the inductor of 10 millihenry, this is the voltage. What is the current? Inductor? V equals L D I D T. What's given to me? The voltage. How can I find the current? I need to integrate, right? So the current will be I equals one over L integral of V D T. Correct? Yes? I need to integrate in this case. So after integration, I get 100 T squared. This circuit I mentioned to you, I showed, we did this in the class. Yes? Uh, in the last session, what would be the After integrating one over, this is one over L, integral of two T, two tau from zero to T, it gives me two T square over point O one, which becomes hundred T square, but only for the range between T zero and T. What I use for what? Why use zero to T? Because I need to find, I want to integrate. From zero to t, right? Between zero and t, any t. So this is the general solution for any t between zero and t, because it's given to me between zero and t. It's not constant. Right? It's 2t, yeah. right? You can take the 2 out of the integral. Right. So, this question we did in the class, and I mentioned to you that in the steady state, right, what happens? So the capacitor dv dt is 0, so it's open. For the inductor, di dt is 0, so it's short, right? Correct? So this is a DC car, this is a DC circuit. Everything is quiet, no changes. So dv dt, di dt are zero, which means that this becomes open, this becomes short, this becomes short, this becomes open. So this is the new circuit. And from this circuit we find I1. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what's given. Yeah. Given DC, right? Nothing changes. There is no switch open and closed or anything, right? It was sitting there for 25 years. This is the circuit that you have right now. No changes. Another question was the following. Several capacitors find the equivalent capacitance. Do you want to do it? Go ahead. We need something like that in the class. Remember that capacitors in series behave like inductors in parallel and the other and vice versa.
So these two are in parallel. We just add them up, 2 plus 4. Then in series with the 3, so 6 in, in series with the 3 becomes 2. And then we have 2 in 2 in parallel becomes 4. And then 1 and 4 and 1 become uh, C equivalent of 4 over 9. We know how to do it, right? And with inductors, of course, we have here 3, 6, and 6. So these are in parallel. And 2 and 4, 12 and 4 also in parallel. So 3 and 6 and 6 and 6 together are 3. And with 3, it becomes one, this becomes 1 1.5. This becomes 3. So we have 5 plus 3 plus 1.5. It's 9.5 Henry, right? Just like resistors. Okay, so this was one of the tests. Second test I want to share with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here we are with another test. This will be there in the test as well. Tevin and Norton will be in the test that we are expecting here. So question number one was to find our thevenin. What is it? This is open, this is short. What do you get? Two plus three, right? Clear? Yeah. This is chapter five. One B, what is ISC? You shorten this one. If you short this one, Vx becomes zero. So this disappears. Yeah. Make it bigger. Okay. So the R feminine is two plus three because this is open, this is short. That's how you get it. One B. If you shorten, to find I short circuit, if you shorten Vx, Vx becomes zero. So this becomes zero also, you can ignore that. And you get four volts and ISC, so a four volt divided by five. Point eight. Clear? Four volts divided by five. If you shorten this, right, you get ISC. And then there was another question here which is, what is VOC? VOC in this case is, what's the current here? Zero. What's, what's this one? If this is zero, what's this one? Also zero. What's, uh, what's uh, VOC? Zero. So the other question was very similar to the other test. Given um, a capacitor or voltage, so we try to find the current, C, D, V, D, T. This is the voltage. You go back with this equation, C, D, V, D, T, and you can find the current, right? Clear? I'm going fast because I'm, I have only three minutes left. So I'm just highlighting. Um, then we have the current on the capacitor. So if we have a current, if we have a current, what do we need to do to find the voltage? Integrate, right? Which is V equals 1 over C integral of I dt. So we have to go with integration. This is semi similar, right? 
And the question was, what is C between point A and B? We know how to do it, right? So we can skip that. And same thing for that, equivalent on ductance. Same thing here, what is um, L equivalent? These two are in series, which are in parallel with the 12, which are in parallel with the 6 and 3 in parallel, and 2 millihenry here. So that's, you know how to do. And so this one again is a DC, right? DC voltage circuit. DC voltage, this is short, this is short, this is short, this is short, this is short. So what's left? Only one resistor. These two become zero. These two become zero. This is zero, this is zero, this is zero. Only this one left. Okay? And then here we, we give C equivalent and we ask what is C? So 7 plus C are in parallel and they become in a series with a 6 microfarad which together give you a 4 microfarad. So you go sort of in the inverse to find, right? To find the C. Same, same story here. Given CT from here to here, what is C to make it 0.5 microfarad? Here, again, LDIDT, as we did before. You can see the style. And um, here we ask for energy um, stored. So it's a half Li square. Okay, this is your class average. And based on that, you can tell where you are. Um, Canvas make all kind of strange averages. So don't look at the average by canvas. Look at the average that you do by the syllabus, okay? Let's take the average of four tests. Good. So welcome again. I would like to go over test number three briefly so at least you know, um, you understand where things went well or not well. Question number one <clears throat> had two parts. Part one is to find I short circuit. And to do that, we shorten this line. Now, many of you did it well, but some ignore the seven volts. So, um, Obviously, the three milliamps go, goes here, right? Right away. It, that's the priority that this current source has. It has a short, it goes through the short. But in addition, there is current which is generated by the seven volts and going this way, this way, and then split into two parts. So this one had an effect of these two sources, both of them, and it led to 3.31 milliamps. Um, another error which I found, people find V open circuit here, but I didn't ask for it. So this was an error, I guess, they didn't read the question or something. And one or two students found R7 in, but I, never, I didn't ask for it. So that was another, not common, but you know, one or two students did it. Uh, part B, was about finding R7 in. This was a straightforward thing. And instead of the uh, current source, you put open circuit. Instead of the, the voltage source, you put short circuit. Now, when you put short circuit in parallel with two and one, what happens? They become short, right? Short in parallel with no matter what kind of resistors you have. So this thing, whole thing becomes short. Clear? No, not clear? Okay. So let me explain. That, that's a good, I, I want you to ask questions now. That's why we're doing it. So if I have, uh, 
something like that, okay? What is the total resistance between point A and point B? Because of the short, right? This whole thing becomes short, correct? Because the current, if there is current here, it will flow through here and continue all the way to just ignoring the, the two resistors, right? You can see, think about it in a different way also. You can say if I have resistor in parallel with the short, so this is R equals, let's say, 10 ohms. This is zero ohms, right? What's the total? 10 times zero over 10 plus zero, which is zero, right? Clear? So when you have short in parallel with the, no matter what, it's short. Yes? This was? Correct. It's exactly that, yes. Um, now, so we, we shorten that. Oh, sorry. We shorten this one, and this is gone. So we have 4 plus 3. That's what we have. R17 is 4 plus 3. I give partial credit for those who made this mistake, partial, small partial credit, but not, not full credit, of course. So R17 is 4 plus 3, and this was the resistance R17. Question number two was about superposition. By far simpler than last time, by far. And we had, so this circuit becomes actually two, two circuits. One is the current source with the short here, because we shortened that. And the other circuit is voltage source here with open circuit here, right? So we take, um, when we choose one of them, this, uh, then current sources become open. We, when we choose the current source here, the voltage source becomes short. So voltage source becomes so, uh, short and current source becomes open. Each one gives you a current, Ix1, Ix2, which you know how to do, and totally you get 11.46. This was question number two. Question about that? So this was by far a simpler question than the last test. <laughs> Here, people did quite well. Uh, the main problem that I, that I recall was units. Some put here 30 amps or 3,000 amps or something, or you know, big and small numbers. Um, but generally speaking, people did well on this, on this one. They found the slope and just took, in this case, CDVDT. In this case, LDIDT. You take the slope, and I wrote the slopes right here. I wrote the slopes here. Here you multiply the slope by C. Here you multiply the slope by L, and you get the values for the, in this case, for the current, for the voltage, in this case, for the current. Yes? Y is? Where we're talking about? Why is three over two? Three a. Ah. Right, right, right. So if you look at this, the from here to here you have twenty volts, right? Let's look at this part. Only this part. This difference is 10. This difference is 2. So the ratio is 10 over 2, but with negative sign because it's a negative slope. Right? This is also the same slope. So the, you can go by, you know, 20 divided by 4 or 10 divided by 2. You get the same. Right? Slope is slope. You can choose any, any seg segment of this straight line and you get a slope. So this, this is 10 over 2 or 20 over 4. It's the same. 
with a negative sign, of course. OK? So people did, generally, people, um, general people did well on this question. Other questions on this? Question number four, the pretty much people did well. Most people did well on that one. Um, there was some mix up on the capacitor thing. Um, people mixed parallel and series, but very few. So this was a good question. Uh, question number five, the op amp is, a, I mentioned to you when we, when we studied the op amp that uh, we keep every semester, whoever teaches it um, for the last many years have the same problem of explaining the principles, but when you come to the test, something happens. We don't have a magic wand to, to figure out what exactly is what's going on, but it appears pretty, it's very consistent from one semester to another. Uh, the principles for op -amp are simple, but when it comes to the test, something goes Something is not right. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it, okay? If this is six volts, right? What's the voltage here? Six volts. So you know that this current plus this current equals this current, correct? What is this current? 10 minus 6 over 12, this one. What is this current? 8 minus 6 over 2, this one. Equals, right? 6 minus V out, 6 minus V out over 3. So this one equals that. Okay? Yes. What? Clear? Yeah. yeah. This one? This one? Okay. Okay. So this gave you two, two volts. This is so all, all you had to write it was this equation. And if you wrote this equation, you got most of the credit. Even if the solution was not correct. Uh, the second part of the question was, what is V out? Again, we can do the same thing. If this is 5 volts, this is also 5 volts, right? So 6 minus 5, this, this current, 6 minus 5 over 3 plus 2 minus 5 over 4, this is the other current. Together, it's the current that flows here. This together is 1 kilo ohm, so it's 5 volts minus V out over one kilo ohm. So this is the equation we need to write. And if you write it, you can get V out. Again, if you write, write this equation, you got most of the credit. Okay? Question six was obvious. I think all of you got it right, except one equation here. Uh, people, some students did not do this equation for I don't know how, what reason, but Question six was a gift. Okay.